and we are recording. Okay, so I'm gonna hit my timer. Disclaimer, there will likely be sound machines and baby noises here, so I will go on mute when I am not speaking to try and avoid any additional noise. Uh, we are here today talking with Mauer Park owner and crafty person, <laughs> Salome Below. <laughs> and I imagine most of you watching this um, are probably very familiar with both Salome Bulow and myself, Lara Bulow, her sister. Uh, but in case, in case this video any ever expands into the World Wide Web and greater community, we're just gonna do a quick intro um, to who I am and who Salome is. So I'm Salome's sister, Lara Bulow. I work as a career transition coach. And today I am helping facilitate an interview about um, Mauer Park over the last year. Salome Bulow is former owner and creator of Mauer Park, a cafe in the Castro of San Francisco that was shut down due to COVID times. So let's just dive right in before I eat up all of our time describing all of this. So this is a one, this is the first part of a three part series where we're just gonna review what's been going on with Mauer Park and Salome um, since COVID began. Salome, tell us, what is Mauer Park? How did you start? So I majored in um, film and television um, with great fervor. Um, ma ma majority of the reason I think looking back, hindsight is twenty twenty, uh, was because I loved creating spaces um, and creating um, en environments. Uh, so when I decided to leave the film industry, I was in a career transition, um, and you were there along that path, um, and I was really have always been interested in cooking and baking and our parents are from Germany and I've always really loved visiting Germany and kind of diving into that um, the difference of food culture and I always felt that there was also a um, very stereotypical German food here in the U.S. rather than something that was a little bit more authentic to what I knew um, and so I felt like I was in the perfect time in my life to give this thing a shot and, you know, give it everything I had. Um, and so I focused on creating a community space that provided authentic German cuisine that was slowly and sustainably sourced. Um, we opened in October of 2018. I think you're still muted, Laura. Yes, and it keeps giving me an internet unstable message. Um, okay, October of 2018 is when Mauer Park opened. Yeah. Okay, now give us the brief version of COVID hitting. So that was March, 2019. We had just passed our basically one and a half year anniversary. Um, and I was already in a space where I was considering um, taking on more loans in order to create more seating, um, outdoor seating for the cafe and was kind of in this place of like, do I expand to potentially make this business float? Um, uh, because I had great reviews and good stable customers, but I was in this space where um, pre-COVID rent was really high in San Francisco, it still is high, but um, COVID has definitely caused a dip in rent prices. Uh, so COVID hits in March and because, you know, no one is really prepared and I'm a one woman show, um, I enter a COVID pod for three months and start doing boxes um, where I'm selling, um, gourmet groceries, uh, creative or um, craft items that I make myself. Um, and then uh, also occasionally um, a like artisanal local product. Um, and so I start doing that for three months to try and keep Mauer Park's doors open while I'm applying for PPP loans, which is the payment uh, paycheck protection program takes a long time because everybody's scrambling to figure out what the requirements are. Um, 
so that sort of that scramble period of figuring out what to do next, trying to apply for loans, um, trying to take care of my employees since we're very community oriented. I'm very close or was very close and very close with all of my previous employees um, and trying to get them their paychecks, even though we're not operating. Um, the parameters of like what was allowed and what wasn't allowed was constantly changing. So those three months were more about trying to make our park a safe and operable space for when the doors can finally open. The doors opened back up um, beginning of July. Um, so I did a April, May and June box and then beginning of July, um, I did one more box for July and I was open at the same time. Um, and well, maybe I, I think maybe even I opened in June. That might be right. Yeah. Um, so I opened in June um, and we put up all the safety precautions, which involved uh, building a cart, building safety screenings, coming up with safety protocols, um, printing and getting all the different signage that was required by the city. Um, which also was extremely difficult for me to do while also trying to cook, bake, and operate um, a cafe with new, more stringent operations. Uh, I also had to launch an online ordering system. Um, so all of this was taking a lot of time and energy uh, that I was already short on to begin with. And I really started to feel burned out um, and PPP money wasn't coming in at that time. My landlord was refusing to speak to me about rent abatement. Um, the laws in San Francisco that said rent could be abated um, basically just meant that they would push it out, not that it was forgiven. So I was still on the hook for multiple months of rent that I still hadn't been able to pay. So the debts were racking up. And although I was getting a lot of love and support um, from my loyal customers, um, the foot traffic that was the bread and butter of the cafe was gone. Um, and so as, you know, as we headed into August, um, I decided I needed to hire a lawyer to try and get my landlord to finally be in touch with me about what I was capable of doing uh, in terms of paying for rent and if they were able to meet me halfway. Um, and those conversations eventually led me to the space of, it was forced by hand essentially to make a decision um, about whether or not Mauer Park was sustainable as a business uh, with a brick and mortar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for all of you listening out there, we're gonna pause for now. That's the, basically year in review, the COVID year in review of Mauer Park. As Salome mentioned, she opened in October of 2018, yeah. celebrated a year October 2019, and then March 2020, right. COVID hits, right? Yeah, um, I said March 2019, but that's wrong. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't <laughs> remember. Yeah. So yeah. So March 2020, COVID hits, and that takes us up until August of 2020. Um, so from we're now hitting pause on the story, and we have two more segments for you um, in the future. All right, hold on, I'm going to stop recording. And um, stay posted, and we'll send you those additional links when they're ready.